Hi, this is Norman Long. Um, this is a demo I did for my painting class, which was featured in Artist and Illustrators magazine in June 2021 edition. The challenge was to use more paint. So I took copious amounts of paint outside into the park in Preston, and this was the demo that resulted. So this piece was done on an oil primed board. Um, the board is gessoed first and then covered in leftover oil paint. So these are the piles of paint on my palette, um, accumulated from the day's painting and uh, scooped into nice neutral piles of colour. Many of these colours can be used in the next painting. I preserved them in a, a biscuit tin, metal biscuit tin, in the freezer overnight and I can use them in the next painting. But when too much paint accumulates, then I save it in these simple cling film parcels and I use it to, to prime the boards. So as you see, I'm deliberately not mixing the paint too thoroughly, um, allowing some of the different colours to to remain in the mixtures. And you may still find that there's a few little skins where some of the paint has dried, and these are worth removing, because it will make it a bit of an unstable paint layer if you leave them in. So that's what I'm doing just there with the palette knife. Um, this is quite a heavy paint application, and this would probably take more than three weeks to dry. Um, usually I wouldn't do it quite so heavy, but I'm doing this so that you can really see the texture. So I'm taking the paint right over the edges of the board. Um, sometimes I even run my finger along the edge of the board just to make sure that's covered too, but uh, just taking the, the bent right over the edges. So this is a surface that you can certainly paint on. I've done lots of paintings on this kind of messy textured palette knife surface. Um, you might want to rough it up a little bit when it's dried if it's a bit too smooth, perhaps using rough sandpaper or the, the teeth of a saw, but uh, but you can certainly use it. But one of the ways I'm showing here of roughing it up more is using a very soft brush and just gently teasing it into the paint. And it, it really produces a very um, exciting and, and rough texture. The great thing about this is that you can keep playing with the surface until it arrives at something that you find interesting. In this bit, I've taken it a bit too far deliberately. So I've really squidged the brush into the surface and made it really, really rough. So I'm sure that you can do that and then flatten it down a little bit with a palette knife so that it's a little bit more tame to paint on top of. Um, but you can really have, we can really have a lot of fun with this. and including tonking, of course, uh, laying paper on and taking it off. And you can see how it really creates some pretty spectacular ridges of paint that again can be flattened down. And another thing I've tried at times is to use the edge of a piece of paper um, to drag that through the paper. And here I'm flattening the surface down, but you can use the edge of the paper too to, to drag through the surface.
Here we've arrived at a surface which is similar to one that I use for this demo. Um, we have to wait for, I'd say, at least three weeks for a surface like this to dry before working on it. And once it's dry, it just needs a little bit more prep. This particular one, this is three weeks later or more, um, it's just been the leftover paint. I've just scratched it onto a, a, a panel. And here I'm using a palette knife to just get rid of any loose ridges of paint. We don't want any loose ridges and wiping it off, getting rid of that dust. So uh, next up is a palette knifed surface. Really nice, rough, variegated surface. Um, but the smooth passages, I like to rough them up a little bit more. Like a plasterer will give a rough coat underneath his final coat of plaster. Um, I like to rough up any smooth part knife passages just to give a good tooth for the, for the paint to adhere to. I tend to make these boards in batches and um, so we're about to jump into the demo now. Um, I took uh, two different boards out of different colors and textures um, just gives you a choice to respond to the subject with a colour that seems appropriate. Um, so the, the the demo was done on a gorgeous day. Um, uh, what is it? Twenty by fourteen oil primed panel, quite rough. I don't do this obviously. This is for the sake of the the video, so you can see see the the palette vertically. Normally, I have it horizontally. Like Rub Pointing has one of these palettes there and another one there, which is great because you always need more palette space. Or sometimes I use another painting of the palette. So so on the one of the other demos, I use this palette and then another board as a palette if you need more space. Um, uh, there was a stage where these did slide off onto the floor. So anybody who happens to walk the dog along this stretch might get a foot full of gray, but anyway. I'll, I'll claim I didn't know anything about it. Um, so I'll just, just run through the palette very quickly because people often ask, um, it's the sort of thing that, that I always want to know, but uh, I always think it's very boring to tell people, but I'm still asked people their palettes. So um, so we've got, these are all Winton because I'm using massive quantities of paint. I'm not gonna use artist quality. Um, although there is the saying, remember this one, paint like a millionaire. Um, but this is a uh, lemon yellow hue, um, the yellow ochre. This is just a mixed palette mud. Um, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium scarlet, magenta. I think these are from, I didn't include any more of this. I didn't put a cool red in, I don't think, I can't remember. If I did, it was permanent rose. That's permanent rose, I think. Um, ultramarine, four blobs of ultramarine. I don't know why I did that, but. I think because one of the blobs gets mixed with the purples and one of the blobs gets mixed with the viridian that I've not put yet to get a turquoise. So that leaves two blobs of pure ultramarine in the middle. The, this, this is a cadmium lemon hue. Um, a few blobs of white. Uh, and I think two blobs of burnt sienna or burnt sienna yeah, two, or a magenta. So burnt sienna, two blobs of burnt sienna, maybe three to make a black if I wanted to. All the rest is palette mud and it looks kind of random and just muddy, but actually, uh, obviously pinkish colors, purplish colors, these are bluish, but towards purple, towards green, um, greener variations. These are more neutrals over this side. So cool neutrals to warmer neutrals and then lighter, warmer neutrals up here. Uh, kind of a method to the madness, although you see pretty soon that it all goes crazy. So my aim is to get on as much paint as I can, as quickly as I can. And um, so the drawing here is gonna be pretty simple and straightforward. Just dividing up the canvas into some major shapes um, here I'm diluting the paint with a medium, that's white spirit with linseed oil. Because it's an oil surface, I need 
a little bit of linseed oil in with my diluting medium. Uh, so and so really simple lines. I'll show you in a moment the the uh, thumbnail sketch that I did, which is really rapid. Um, I'm just dividing the the rectangle up into thirds, basically. So the vertical of the main tree is on a third, and then the main horizon line is on a third. Um, so you'll see that in a moment. So here is that thumbnail sketch. Um, another thing is I've got a diagonal going right into the bottom right hand corner, which is something I kind of like. Um, I'm not too bothered about the overall proportions as long as it fits into a, a pleasing composition. So over the next few minutes, I um, establish the drawing and then erase it. And I'm just trying to get the position of those two main trees. And at some point, I'll do a little tiny bit of measuring too. And here I'm indicating in a very schematic way just that area of warm light in the trees, that sunlit area. And um, then I want to guess where the trees end on the right-hand side, so I'll just measure from one tree to the other and slide that across just to make a very rough measurement of where the trees end at the right-hand side. I don't mind leaving some of the um, primed board showing through, so I'm just using a, a small number two brush and little touches of colour to indicate, refine the shapes a little bit more before I start slapping on the paint with a palette knife. So here I want to just check the position, the height of a branch. And so I just use a horizontal measurement to find a vertical measurement. That's about as much measuring as I do in my whole life, is that distance is the same as the other distance. I want to define the shape of the landscape, the silhouette, a little bit more clearly before I proceed. This video doesn't cover the full length of the painting, um, and parts of it are speeded up, but this part here is not speeded up. Um, it's in real time, so I'm just making quick jabs of the brush to... I think I'm about ready to start using thick paint. I get to that stage where I'm thinking, if I don't get any of this paint from the palette to the painting pretty soon, I'm going to end up with a nice thinly painted picture.
it's good to have finally started getting some thicker paint on and as you can see i'm not blending the colors fully um it's important to arrive at the average color of that part of the subject but it's a more interesting surface if i don't fully mix those colors as i go In general, if I'm going to err in one direction, it will be towards making the colours cleaner and purer at this stage than they need to be, because colours will always get a bit muddier as I work them into each other. Um, so I'm mixing up the sky colour here. A turquoise made from viridian and ultramarine, quite clean. And then as I progress up into the sky, I'll be adding more pure ultramarine and then the very highest section of the sky, which will be the, high, the darkest part, will be ultramarine with a bit of cool red or magenta mixed into it. So that it gives a transition of pure colors from a greenish blue to a straight blue to a reddish blue. I often hear that, um, oh, the paint is too wet. I can't, can't paint into it. Um, well, here I'm using a, probably a soft brush uh, and, and relatively thick, dark paint and painting lines into really thick, light paint. And it does stick. If you use a definite stroke, plenty of paint, then you can make an impression even on thick, light paint. In fact, those marks are some of the most exciting marks you can make. Um, just use plenty of paint. Here's some figures 
appeared walking along the path and and going down the embankment and some obviously just using the wrong end of the brush to scratch in the positioning and the, and the scale of those figures for a possible inclusion. Once I've got something established that's worth checking, my favourite way to check the painting is, is to look at it in the mirror. So I always bring a mirror along, even when I'm painting outdoors. Um, so I'll stand back as far as I can, and uh, the mirror reverses the image, so you see in, it, in an unfamiliar way. You can even hold it high and see it upside down without turning the painting upside down. It also doubles the distance from yourself as in it makes the image twice as small, so it's like you've walked a long way back. So it gives you an immediately objective view of your painting. And also, having switched it around from left to right is very useful because that too makes it like somebody else's painting. You've not worked it that way. And often you'll have neglected one side of the composition. We naturally tend to do that. So the mirror is a really useful quick check tool for drawing and composition. The general impression I got from looking in the mirror was that um, the painting was a bit too clean and tidy, um, mostly pure colors. And so here I'm beginning to pick up a lot of those neutral, muddy colors from the palette and, and trying to really get them into the painting. Even if, uh, so I don't want to be left with piles of paint on my palette at the end of the picture. I want it to be mostly on the painting. Um, so this is what I call my crazy half hour, where I'll use any color and work more instinctively and um, just mess about to try and disturb the niceness of the painting. Here I'm starting to use a very rough brush, which is one that I doctored by cutting out some of the hairs. So it's a very rough, bristly brush to make really scratchy marks in the paint. Perhaps in some way mimicking the texture of the, the trees, but not in too much of a literal way.
Well, that was quite an exciting bit of painting for me. Um, quite instinctive and just responding to the subject quickly. Uh, but you can see by the state of my palette now that I need some fresh paint if I'm going to make any good marks. Um, and it's also getting to the stage where the palette needs to be cleaned off entirely. Even though I may feel very much into the painting and like I'm responding well and things are going well, if I try to continue with this palette, it's really just all going to turn to mud. You can't make clean colours from a dirty palette. So pretty soon I'm going to have to give myself an enforced break and, uh, and clean that thing off. So now we have a nice clean palette with refreshed piles of paint around the edges. Um, and the process of doing that, which is quite a job with this much paint, uh, I didn't throw any paint away, by the way, just put it into relevant piles of neutral colours to be reused. Um, but the process of cleaning off the palette is very useful, not only for the sake of clean paint, but also for a time of reflection without looking at the painting. And so when you look back at the painting, it has a fresh look to you. It can tell you what it needs. And... Um, Looking back, I, I like the painting at this stage. It's really thick all over and quite expressive. But at the time, I felt that it was just too uniform in its thickness. And I wanted to vary things, create more sense of realistic space by having thinner as well as thicker paint, flatter as well as rougher passages. So here... I'm starting to remove the paint in the areas of the subject that recede in space, just using the palette knife. Um, putting that paint back on my palette. And also, as I repaint those areas, it'll give me a chance to get the color more accurate. I think in many of these areas, the, the color was too light, and so it needed to be darkened. So as I'm repainting these areas, I have a chance to change the color as well. Um, but really, it was a decision mostly about texture.
So at this stage of proceedings, I'm continuing to hopefully give some sense of realism, some sense of space, but the light has changed significantly, and actually what I really want to do is start another painting. So this is the first stage of the painting where the paint was all piled on, um, and then I had my break and cleaned off the paint and rethought things and, and started to scrape the paint down a bit. So coming up to the next stage, um, which is where we saw it getting to just now, uh, the paint is still quite thick in parts but thinned down in others. And here's where it was finished to on site with the inclusion of a figure. And then back at the studio, I reworked things um, for a bit more realism. So all those different stages have their qualities, but um, one always returns to one's own style. So this is more typical of my style of painting than that very expressive early version. And uh, just to finish, we have a close-up detail of the figure and some nice juicy paint. Thank you.